Hey guys, it's Trey here, back with another video. And in today's video, I want to show you guys how to incorporate a, uh, your MySQL server with your Node.js application. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you're gonna need to do is install MySQL on your um, computer, laptop, whatever you're using. I have a video that I will link in the description that will show you how to do that if you've never done that before. Um, go ahead, click that link, get that set up. Once you have your MySQL server set up on your computer, you will need to run um, this SQL file, which I will always also have linked down below and you will just run this it will create a database um, called youtube and it'll put this one table in here that's called users just going to have an id a username and an email as the fields and um we're going to create a user that will be able to access this table in this um database all right so we're going to create this uh, youtube user um with a password of password don't use that in your uh, real applications, any production applications, please do not set password as your password. And next up, we grant um, these four actions to the user. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And then we're going to flush those privileges so they can be used. All right. So we're just going to um, run this in our database. I've already done that. So um, I already have all this stuff set up. So once you have this set up, we can go ahead and begin setting up the project. So I just have an empty folder here and we're going to start by initializing our node application. So you can do that by typing in, well, make sure you're in the, uh, the root directory of where you want your project to be at. And then you type in NPM init and then dash Y dash Y is just going to skip all the options. You just have the default options. So we do that, it creates our package.json file. Once we have this in our directory, we can go ahead and start installing packages. The only two packages we're gonna need for this example is gonna be Express and MySQL. So we're gonna install these by typing in npm i-s, and then we're gonna type in Express, and then we're gonna type in MySQL. So these are gonna install and these are the only packages we need for the example that I'm doing today. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and set up our server. We're just gonna be setting up a basic um, express server. And this express server will be what we use to actually um, be able to hit our endpoints from um, Postman. Let's start by creating a file. We're gonna call this file um, server.js. So I'm just gonna say touch server.js. Right, you can also come up here and hit the little plus button and do your uh, files that way. I'm just so used to the command line that I do it that way. So now I have this file created. I'm going to close out this SQL file and I'm going to open up our server JS file. All right. Now we have this blank file and we're going to go ahead and create our express server. This is just a basic express server. Um, if you haven't done it before, there are plenty of tutorials out there to figure out how to set up a basic express server. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and I'll come back and explain what uh, we have here. All right, so I have now set up a basic express server and basically all we're doing is um, creating a server. We're telling it to use um, JSON. So basically our requests will be interpreted as JSON and responses and everything. So that's what that's doing there. Then we're going to set this um, this root slash at, um, for our routes. We have not created these routes yet. This will be basically where we the, the file where we store our endpoints at um, to be able to create, update, um, get and delete our users. And lastly, we're just um, starting the server, basically telling it to listen on port 8080. All right, so that's pretty much all we did here. Now we can go ahead and begin creating our routes file, which is basically gonna have all the logic for getting information in and out of the MySQL database. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm gonna say make deer, and I'm going to call it routes. All right, and then inside of that directory, I'm going to create a file called index.js. All right. 
So that file is basically what we're importing here on line two. So let's go ahead and go into our new file. It is blank, of course. And now we're going to start by setting up um, our router, which is going to be our express router. And that's basically what's going to be able to uh, distinguish between the requests and tell which, um, which logic to run. And the first thing I'm going to do is import express. And we also are going to need MySQLs. And these are the two packages that we imported earlier. Now, in order to use your MySQL server, you have to set up a connection. So instead of creating a new connection every time um, an endpoint is hit, we're just going to set up a connection pool, which is basically going to be a bunch of connections that can be used anytime that a request is made. So a request is made, it's going to grab one of those connections that are already set up and use that for um, the request. All right, the way we're going to do this is we're going to say const, and then we're going to call it connection pool. And then we're going to set it equal to mysql dot create pool. All right, so we're going to call that function. And inside of here, we're going to pass in some configuration. All right, so the first thing we want to pass in is the host. The host, um, in our case, is going to be local host because the MySQL server is on my local computer. So I'm going to set that as the host. Then we're going to put the user and our user is YouTube user. Um, all of this information is coming from this YouTube create file that we ha that I showed you at first. So as we can see, this is our YouTube user. Now that we have our user, we're going to set the password. Our password is password. Once again, don't use that in production. And then we need to set up our database and our database is YouTube. And last but not least, we need to set up how many connections that we want to have in this pool. So we're going to say connection limit and then we're going to set that to I'll just set it to 10. So we have 10 available connections for each request that we that's being sent. So now we have our connection pool, which means we can connect to our MySQL server. So the next thing we want to do is actually set up our routes or our endpoints that we're going to use to actually do these things. The way we do this is we're going to use the express router. So I'm going to come up here above our connection pool and I'm going to create our router. So we're going to say const router equals express dot router and that's a function there so we do that we get our router back all right so from here we can go ahead and use our router to set up the endpoints all right so we're going to say router dot post all right so post is going to be the http method that we're going to use for this endpoint and we're going to be creating a user here so we're going to say slash user all right, so that's our endpoint name. And then we need to pass in a callback. So we're going to say request and response. So here we want to create a user, which means we want to insert a user into our database. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to need to get the user info from the request. So the request is going to have a body, and that body is going to include all of the um, fields for a user. The first thing we need to do is get our user info from the body of the request. So we're going to say const user equals request dot body. So this is going to grab the user from the request. All right. So once we have our user info, we can go ahead and insert it into the database. And we're going to do this by using our connection pool that we created earlier. So I'm going to say connection pool dot query. So this is where we're querying our MySQL database. So a query takes in a couple of parameters and the first one is the actual query itself. So we're going to say insert into user. So this is basic SQL. And then we're going to insert the username and the email because we don't need to insert the ID because that is auto increment. So it's going to automatically assign this an ID once we insert it. Okay. So we put the, we want to insert those two and then we want to set the values for those two. And then we're going to 
instead of just putting user dot username here um, we don't want to do that because that will open up your application to SQL injection and we do not want that so what we want to do is make a prepared statement that way we can sanitize all of the values and make sure that nobody's trying to inject any SQL into our application so the way we do this is we use question marks instead so instead of putting the actual values from this user object we're just going to put two question marks so this question mark will represent the username and this question mark will represent the email all right so once we do that you're probably wondering well how do we get the information in there we um, that is what the next parameter is so we're going to do a comma and then we're going to do square brackets and inside of these square brackets we want to put the information in the order um, that corresponds to these question marks so we want to put the username first and then we want to put the email all right so we're going to say user dot username and then user dot email all right so that there will get you um, get injected into this um, SQL statement here and get executed all right so once we do that all we need to do is have a callback to handle the information that comes back so here we're going to um, it's going to have an error first if there are any errors that get stored in that object and then we'll have the results all right so now we can come down here let's see if I can there we go all right, so I just reformatted it so you can see everything on um, on the screen. And now if we come down here, we can um, handle the results. So the first thing we want to do is check if there were any errors. So I'm going to say if errors, if there are any errors, we want to run this logic. Uh, what we'll do is we'll just um, console.log the error. And then we will send. So we'll say res.send. And then we will send a message and the message will say um, request failed all right so that will handle our errors oh and then we actually want to do a return here all right so don't forget that line after we do that so that happens if there's an error if there's not an error then we just want to say that hey the request was successful and pass back the new, newly created user all right so let's do that and we will say res.send and then inside of here we'll pass in an object then we'll have a message and the message will be request successful and we'll have data and the data will be our results all right and that's it that right here is we'll create a new user in the database as long as we pass in a user here all right so what we're going to do from here is we're going to actually create the next endpoint which is going to update a user all right and it's going to be almost identical to this function here except for obviously the query is going to be different so let's go ahead and construct our new query. This will be update. It will say update. User. And then we'll say set. And then we're going to say username equal. And then remember, we're not going to put the actual information in here. We're just going to put question marks where we want the information to be. So we'll say username equals a question mark. And then we're going to say email equals another question mark. All right. So very similar. And we put it in the same order. So we don't have to rearrange the user username, user email here. So all of that is just going to work out. And um, for the rest of it, we're pretty good. Now, the only other thing we need to do is we need to change on this um, on line 32 here um, where it says router dot post we're not posting anymore we're going to call the put HTTP method so this put method will be for updating and this post will be for creating a new one that's why we can keep this same endpoint 
because we're using two different HTTP methods. All right, so it'll be the same endpoint, but two different HTTP methods. And that will update our user. So that was pretty simple. The next thing we need to do is be able to get our user's information. All right, so we're gonna do pretty much the same thing, but it's gonna be slightly different. So we're gonna say router.get. So this get HTTP method is gonna allow us to get our user from our database. So we're going to say the same thing, user. But this time we're going to need to add in the ID of the user that we want to get. So the way we're going to do that is by passing in a parameter in our URL or our endpoint. So we'll say user and then we'll say slash and then we'll put a colon and then we put ID. So what this is, is basically a placeholder for whatever value you put in. All right. And we're going to be able to get that value in our function, in our callback function. So let's go ahead and set that up. We also, the same as before, have the request and the response. And then we have to get our ID from this parameter, all right? So the way we're going to do that is we're going to say const ID. And then we're going to say request.params.id. So that's going to grab this ID off here, whatever it is, if it's one, 100, 1000, whatever the ID is, it's going to grab it off of there and assign it to this variable. Well, this constant, I should say. All right. So from here, we do what we did earlier and we just use our connection pool dot query. And then let me scroll it. All right. So now we want to write out our query and this time we want to get. So we're going to say select star from user where ID equals question mark. All right. And then here we'll pass in the ID inside of our square brackets. And then we can check for errors and pass back the results. All right. So I just re, uh, reformatted that. And now it's pretty much the same thing. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to go up to the other one and copy it straight out. It's, it's the same logic. I actually need to copy from here and paste it. Boom. Same logic. If there's an error, then go ahead, log the error, return a message failed. If not, then we say message request successful and pass back the results. All right. And that will pass back our user. So there we go for that. And then for our last one, when we need to delete, we're just going to copy this because it's going to be pretty much the same logic. Once again, paste that. And instead of get here, we're going to say delete because that is the HTTP method that we want to call. And this is going to stay the same because we want to do the same thing. We need to get the ID. So we grab the ID off and now we just need to go ahead and rewrite this query. So we're going to say delete from user where ID equals question mark. All right. And then we pass in the ID. It'll go through. It'll try to delete it. If it has an error, it'll do the same logic or else it will return. All right. So now we have all of our methods, our CRUD methods. We create, read, update and delete. So we have all of those here. And now we can go ahead and test it out. All right. So let's go ahead and test it out. The way we're going to do this is by um, running our Node.js application. And we do that by going into our root directory. And I'm going to print out our files here. So we have to find the root directory where our server.js file is because this is the file we want to run. And then we will say, oh, wait, hold on. There is one major thing that I forgot. So once we create all of these these um, routes, right, these endpoints, there's no way for us to actually import this into our server JS file. Right. So our server JS file here is trying to import this. So it's saying require the routes and it's going to read this file. It's going to say there's nothing exported from this file. So how can we import anything that's not exported? So what we want to do is export this router object. And how we do that is by at the bottom here, 
I'm going to add a space and then we're going to type in module dot exports and then we're going to say equal router and this will export our router so that it can be imported here in our server.js file on this line here all right so once we have that we can go ahead and run our node.js project and it should run flawlessly so let's go ahead and do that the way we do this is you go into the, your root directory where your server date server.js file is and then we type in node server.js enter and now we see that this line has been printed out so we know that our app is listening now all right what we're going to do is we're going to go to postman i don't know if you guys ever have ever used postman before but this is postman and we can create requests http requests from here so we're going to create our request here and then send it to our API, let them do the work, and then it'll send a response here, and we'll be able to see it down here where this little rocket man is. All right. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a user. So you can um, create a new request. Make sure you come here, set it to post, and then type in um, basically we're on localhost, so we're using that's our host. So we're going to say HTTP colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 because that's the port we chose and then slash user so now that we're posting to that slash user endpoint the logic from let me scroll up the logic from here will run because we're doing post to slash user all right so we should get this insert statement to run so let's go back to postman go over to our body and we need to add in the information that uh, for the user that we want to create all right so you go to um, raw right here and then it'll be set to text just scroll down click on it, scroll down to JSON click on it and then type in this information here in JSON format and you need to pass in a username and an email I set mine to John Doe and John Doe at site.com Make sure not to forget your um, curly braces here. And once you have this set up, you can send your request and it should create a user. So let's hit send. Here we go. So we have our response here. And it says request successful, which is what we put. Remember, we wanted to send that request successful. And then we also sent the data results. So see, it says data and this is the results here. So insert um, ID affected rows is one because we only inserted one row. So that sounds good. So it seems as if we created our user. Now we can test that by going creating a get request. So the get request is what's going to pull the user information from our database. And we need to um, create a new request. We're going to set this one to get. And then we're going to do the same thing, same host, but then we're going to set slash user slash one. And let me go back here so I can show you where that's happening at. Okay, so we're calling this get HTTP method, and then we're doing slash user, and then we're saying slash one. And then we're saying slash one. So remember, I said this is a parameter and it can be set to pretty much anything, and we're going to read it in here. So we're going to be setting it to one. So we're getting the user with an ID of one. All right. And that will be the user we just put in there. OK, so here you don't need to pass in anybody or anything because it's a get request. So once we hit send, we should see request successful down here and we should see our user here. So we sent the request. Now we see request successful and we see our ID one. The username is John Doe. And the email is John Doe site.com. Uh, I mean, John Doe at site.com. All right. So we see that that worked. So that means that our API is working so far. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to update our user. So we're going to need another request to do this. So um, you can create another request. This time we're going to set the HTTP method to put. Once we get this method set to put, then we can go ahead and pass in our URL, our endpoint. So same thing, same uh, host with same port. And then we're going to do slash user again, but we're doing a put method. 
which should trigger our, if I go back to the code, it should trigger our put method here. So put and then slash user, and we're gonna pass in the user information. All right, so now I went down here and I'm saying put for the user, right? And now what we wanna do is Now that I realize I have made a mistake here for our put, um, in the put, we also need to uh, check the ID because we're not just updating uh, all the users. We need to update the specific user. So in um, our put, router put right here, we're going to need to add something to our query. So we're going to need to say where ID equals, and then put a question mark, right? And then, in our list here, after the user.email, we need to put user.id. All right, so that will update the correct user now. Before, it will update all of the rows in the table. We don't want that. We just want to update one specific user. All right, so now that we have this, we can go back to Postman. Well, first, um, if your application is running, go ahead and stop it. I do that by hitting Control C. And then you can rerun node server.js because if you don't, these updates won't be um, updated and you'll be still, it won't be working and you'll be trying to figure out why. So make sure you stop the application and then rerun node server.js after you have saved the file once you added in this information here the where clause and the ID. All right. So now you can hit um, enter for your node um, server.js. So it runs again and it's saying started on 8080. Now we're back in Postman and we're using our put, remember? So this is our the same request. And now we can come down and we can add in the ID because we need that to know which user to update. All right. So we're going to update the user with ID one. And you don't have to use um, quotations here. So we're going to do ID one. And now let's go ahead and hit send. All right. It says request successful. So we only affected one row. All right, sounds good, looks good to me. Now, what we can do is we can go back to get user. And if I pull this up, we should still see. So this is the old request that we sent. And remember it said John Doe for ID one. So now that we ran update, if we run this exact same request, if we send this exact same request again, we should get uh, the new response which we did here and we put Jane Doe and Jane Doe at another site.com so we should get that information here instead of John Doe now since we didn't update so let's run this again and now as you can see it says request successful ID 1 username is now Jane Doe and the email is now Jane Doe at another site.com so that update seems to be working as well so that works. And now let's do the last of the tests, and that is to delete this user. So um, create a new request, come here, go to delete. Here's the um, endpoint. So we want to go ahead and do um, slash user slash one. And that goes to our delete fu um, function here, which is here. So the same thing, boom, it should come through, run this, and we should get a delete. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, it says request successful, affected rows is one. All right, great. So now if we go back to our get user request, we can see if we run this, we shouldn't get anything. There we go. So the request was successful because it tried to get it and it didn't find anything. So now our data is empty because that user doesn't exist anymore. Let me slide this up a little bit. So that user doesn't exist anymore. That means our delete function is working fine. And that's pretty much it. So now you know how to integrate MySQL into your Node application. So you can add pretty much any endpoint that you want here. If you um, have another table, you can go ahead and do that. But this is basic CRUD functionality um, with Node.js and MySQL. Um, it's pretty. I'm pretty sure it's pretty similar with any other um, database if you see any out there just go ahead and probably look at their documentation It's probably pretty similar but that's all for this video thanks for watching like and subscribe and all that jazz and i will see you guys in the next video